the ultimate crafty episode. Welcome to Mando Bug Crafts, episode 87. What's up, everybody? My name is Amanda, but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug, and this is my channel here on YouTube where I share the crafty things that I am making. This week, I have a ton of stuff. I have sewing, knitting, crochet, art felt, sculpting, and spinning. I knew there was something else. Um, the ultimate crafty episode. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'd like to thank everybody that is uh, coming back to watch me again. Thank you for returning. Oh, usually every week, but it's been two weeks since I've recorded because um, I was sick. Um, and welcome to anybody that's new. Thanks for taking the opportunity to check me out. Um, make sure you subscribe if you want future updates on my videos. So starting the show out with something I've learned. So I have been working on sewing this baby bell bell baby bag by Swoon, um, this right here. Swoon, bell baby bag. And I'm making this for my very, very pregnant friend. Um, they're thinking the baby's probably going to come a couple weeks early in January. She had some um, false labor contractions. I mean, they were contractions. Um, definitely worth going to the ER for, but she wasn't in full labor yet, so um, since she's having such early signs, they're thinking the baby may come early. So I gotta hurry up! I gotta hurry up, guys! Um, so here's my progress. I'm very, I'm very, very close to done. I just need to sew the lining in place inside the bag and make the handles. And then um, she also requested that I embroider the baby's name on the front pocket. So I need to do that too, but that can always be applied later. I'm going to stitch it on some stash fabric and then applique it to the bag. So if I can at least get the bag done, give that to her. Um, so she can actually use it and then I can start stitching the embroidered applique. But this bag, you guys, is it's legit. Like it's got some sturdy can you hear that? Uh it's got some sturdy stabilizer in the bottom. Every single piece of fabric is interfaced, the exterior and the lining, with the exception of the piece that I believe is um, sewn to the zipper. That one doesn't have interfacing, but that's the one. And more than one piece of fabric sewn to the zipper, so there are interfaced fabrics sewn. But I mean, this is, this is really sturdy. I am so happy with the pattern. And it's very well written. There were there was no confusion as I was reading the pattern. Well, there was one paragraph where I was it took me a little bit to kind of read and get. But other than that, I mean it's been very simple, straightforward. This up until sewing these corners, it was just like quilting, just straight lines, super easy. You're either at a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch seam allowance and just go. And, well, and of course, press, 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 press everything. A lot of basting, which I appreciated. Basting stitches are supposed to be long, loose stitches that are just meant to secure the fabric in place and not actually to be the, con the, the considered seam of the piece. So my machine, I mean, it's got short basting stitches. I would probably say they're a quarter of an inch long. Um, but it wasn't a big deal. There was only one time that you had to take out your basting. So, um, and it was super simple. It wasn't an issue at all. It was actually for the zipper. So, I'll show you up close. You sew these two pieces of fabric shut together. And, like that. You sew them shut. And then from the inside, from the reverse, you sew the zipper in place with it centered in the middle of that seam that you sewed. And once that's done, you go back and you seam, <laughs> you seam rip it open. So you get this nice like hidden zip. And because it overlaps the zipper, it keeps it from getting stuck when you open it. There's no way it's gonna be stuck. So I placed my lining in here, but 
it's not sewn in place yet so I'll wait until it's in place to really be able to show you guys because it's just kind of like ruffled in there but there's pockets inside that match outside as well there's a giant pocket on both sides and then these pockets are also inside as well this is where the handles will go when they're ready. There are stroller clips that can attach to here as well. Um, these are pockets here. This was really fun to do. I have some Instagram stories on my Instagram page about this and how it's done. You kind of have like an accordion seam here. Uh, but what I learned, I haven't even gotten to what I learned yet. What I learned was that if you're going to be sewing um, a quarter inch seam allowance or an eighth of an inch seam allowance, it's best to use the appropriate feet. So the standard foot that came with my machine is this one and it's perfect for a quarter inch seam allowance and you can use it to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but I found that the way that it's shaped, it kind of puckers the fold it like catches and turns it because of um, where it stops and so I was having issues sewing an eighth of an inch seam allowance with this foot and you can see that here this is when I had the issue it's just it's not an eighth of a uh, uh, it's not an eighth of an inch from the edge and it just doesn't look good and there's so much excess it like flips up and had I actually used my Foot that will give me um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance it wouldn't have happened because I used this later for the rest of my stitching that was at an eighth of an inch and it was perfect so in the future I'm going to make sure I only use the quarter inch for the quarter inch and the eighth inch for the eighth inch even though you could um, do an eighth on that one I just found it was fiddly and not as easy as it could be. Um, I considered getting a walking foot for this bag, but I didn't. And I'm okay with that. It wasn't super necessary because of all the basting. There wasn't a lot of layers slipping around. So I did, the one part I did struggle with was the corners. And I put piping, this glitter piping I got from Hobby Lobby, I put it along these seams. And because I struggled with the corners, uh, you can see that I actually sewed into the piping um, instead of along the stitched edge of the piping like I was supposed to. Um, just because these, they're so sturdy that I found it hard to maneuver them around corners. Like there wasn't much give in the fabric and I... I just I struggled so I definitely need to practice my rounded corners it, you know it was very similar to sewing sleeves if you've ever sewn a sleeve um, you know you can have kind of like two odd curved pieces that you kind of have to ease as you sew so um, I need to practice more sleeves more corners apparently curved corners oh and then so one thing I was disappointed about disappointed in myself is I didn't pay attention when I was assembling the bag these pockets are supposed to line up and that's not bad but that one is way off on both sides so that's just something I didn't pay attention to during assembly and you know you might not have even noticed it until I pointed it out but I was kind of kicking myself in the bum for that also, these two pieces were supposed to be cut opposite of each other, and the lining, it's not sewn in so you can't see, I cut them the same direction, and so they're not reversed, it doesn't look as cool, but it's the lining, and it's proof that I made the bag. <laughs> so I, uh, oh, I didn't tell you, I got all of this fabric from Spoon. No, not Spoonflower. I got it from Fabric.com. Um, I will link to everything down below, as I usually do, and it will also be um, on my blog, Mandibug Crafts, at blogspot.com. So, yes. Was there anything else I wanted to tell you about this bag? I don't, I don't think so. I think that was everything. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the pattern. I'm happy with the bag. Um, and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. So there's that. Um, yeah, and I'll share I'll share it when I'm done, hopefully. So moving on to finished objects, because it's been two weeks since I've recorded, I have a lot. I really 
I really should record every week. I think, um, you know, staying home with the kids and not being in school anymore, I have time to do more crafts, so I have more stuff to share, and waiting for two weeks is just not good. So, I finished my art felt hat that I showed you guys last week, or two weeks ago. Um, I tried to use fabric stiffener on it, and it didn't really do much to the hat. And so it's a floppy hat, it's not a cloche hat, but I like it, I like it. So what I added was just a few beads, a little bling, and some hand stitching. So the red spots I turned into flowers. I added some hand stitched stems and some beads in the center to kind of give them a, um, I don't know, like a little center bud. I added sequins to the purple spots. Just, you know, for a little bling. I didn't want too much, but I wanted a little bit. And the turquoise here, I took some of my Vegas thread that I had and sewed some running stitches in there. And that sparkles as well. So just to give it a little, a little extra. Not a lot, just a little. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with it overall. I would like it to be a little stiffer and a little deeper, but I don't think that I'm going to be able to do that. Um, on this hat so it is it is what it is um, and this was if you didn't see my last video this was you made using art felt which is felt and a special art felt paper where you can create your own felt fabric and then I stretch the dome to a head form so toss that over there because my tables full uh, what else oh I finished my socks so these were just some plain vanilla socks that I knit using a US Zero 2.0 millimeter sock needle. I knit them two at a time, toe up, cast on 12, increased to 60, and I knit 60 stitch socks. I had to put my heel, Fish Lips Kiss heel in early because I did too many stitches around. So the next socks that I knit for myself, I'm going to do... 56 stitch in this same yarn. Um, this is Zitron Trekking XXL. This is the 677 colorway. I don't know what color I'm going to do next. I'm going to go buy yarn. Uh, but I want to make sure that it's the same gauge because different, yeah, different sock yarns are different weights. Not by a lot, but by enough that I can't perfect my sock pattern if I'm, you know, jumping around from yarn to yarn. So um, I finished these before Christmas and I was able to wear these on Christmas Day and I actually cast on with the scraps a pair of tube socks for Emily. So this is a free pattern on Ravelry by Jane Richmond. They're kids tube socks and I luckily was at her gauge. So I was at seven and a half stitches per inch. So I was able to use her numbers uh, for the sock size. Now Emily was in between two sizes that she had on her pattern and what's interesting is she recommends roughly a negative one to a negative one and a half inch ease in socks. So I thought you know maybe a little bit of negative ease but I'm surprised a whole inch or an inch and a half of negative ease is a lot. So um, that's what I did. I chose the smaller size that she was in between, which was a 36 stitch sock, and it fits, but I think I may need to go up to 40 stitch from here on out just so that she can wear them for longer because I think she might grow out of these faster than it had I knit them 40 stitch socks. So Emily has a 6 inch circumference foot. And then I just knit until I ran out of yarn. I had split this yarn in half, and so one ball was bigger than the other though, because I didn't make it, I didn't make them even because when I wound them there was a knot. And I, it was kind of near the beginning of the ball, so I left that extra on one, but then by the time I knit these I forgot about the knot, and I hit the knot. Um, I want to say... It was in the middle of the red on one of these socks that I came across the knot and the yarn was tied back together not in the same striping sequence. So I had to guess um, in the striping pattern where to join back up again. And so if I 
sure it evenly, well you can see at the top how far I was off. I was about a row off in color sequence. But they still match, not too bad, and there wasn't a lot of waste, and when not in a ball is not bad. Every now and then that happens. So, oh, so tube socks don't have heels, and we've been wearing these, so I apologize. We wore them Christmas Day, we wore them the day after Christmas. I don't wash my socks after every wear, so um, these are worn and dirty. <laughs> but you can see where Emily's heel hits the sock, because it's stretching there. And I probably should knit these at a tighter gauge because you can see it's kind of loose. But, I mean, you guys, I knit my socks on zeros. I really don't want to go down smaller than zeros. But I also don't want those socks to wear out too fast, so I might. I don't know. Because it's just looking at it, it looks super loose and stretched in that spot. Now, hopefully after I wash these, um, I can put them on her backwards so that she starts wearing on this size, this side, and then as she grows, the heel will move up. So um, maybe, maybe they'll last longer than I think. I don't know. These are the first kids tube socks I've ever knit, and so I'm curious to see how they wear. This yarn is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon yarn so it should be pretty sturdy um, and I don't plan on sending it through the machine even though I could but I thought I would mention that <laughs> so uh, what else did I finish oh I did some spinning so I won one of the prizes for the so perfect pearls sock spackle that was co-hosted with the crafty garden podcast uh, but I won the prize from Jade's podcast, and it was a braid of fiber from Created by LCB in the Chinko Teague colorway, and I've already spun it up. I just, I couldn't wait. Um, Jade sent a lovely package with little extras in it. I took a picture. It had some tea, a mini skein, and um, an, a, um, what do you call it? Like an oil diffuser, which smells amazing. I have it up in my living room, and some other little goodies, and um, the braid of fiber. And here it is, spun. You know you love the fiber when you can't wait. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I took the braid. It had multiple colors within it. I took it and I split it in half lengthwise. I really need to look up these terms. Lengthwise? I think it's lengthwise. Um, the whole length of the braid, I split it in half down the middle and I spun one straight. Just straight color to color to color. And then the other one I split into nine strips. I was going for an even number, but somehow there, the thickness ended up at nine. And I felt it was more important to have similar thickness than it was to have an even number of strips. So I did one side straight, nine strips on the other, and plied those two together to give me a worsted, heavy worsted, fractal spun yarn. As much as I love knitting and crocheting with finer weight yarns, I do love the instant gratification of a thicker spin. Also, um, if you spin, or maybe if you're new to spinning, you'll find that when you learn to spin, you're kind of thick and thin and uneven, and you start getting more consistent and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And then it's much harder to get back out to that thick again. And so I'm really working on being able to spin a consistent, thicker yarn um, just to kind of improve my range and my accuracy so that I can spin the yarn that I want. Um, you know, because you start out just kind of spinning what you get and then, you know, you, you learn to control your hands and the fiber over time. So love 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 this this is super wash targi which i've never worked with before i've spun non super wash targi in the past um i think it was from blue like blue mountain or something like that it was a couple years ago um it was very fluffy very very fluffy and i knew it wanted to be fat so i didn't want to fight the fiber on this one i knew targi liked to be fat and fluffy that's just that's just the nature of the wool but the super wash in it made it very slick and easy to draft. I remember the non super wash targi being a little stickier, not stickier, just grabbier. Sticky, it makes it sound like my finger stuck. That's not what I meant. 
uh, the fibers grab each other more so it's a little bit more work to a um, draft it but the superwash was super slick and super easy to spin a dream the dye the dye job was amazing no color bleed no nothing I love it I love it um, so thank you Jade for the prize my first created by LCB and um, I'm super excited. I think I'm going to knit a hat for my son out of this. I was hoping to knit a hat for my son and my daughter, but I only got, um, this is 50 grams and 80 yards, and this one's 53 grams and 81 yards. So I only have 160 yards, so it'll probably take one and a half to make my son a hat, so my son will get a hat. And I don't know if I'm going to knit or crochet it yet. I don't know. Um... Just because crochet, I like to do double crochet and it's taller and uh, I don't know if it's going to be too tall to get a full stripe around uh, because fractal spun does a cool striping effect. So I finished the spinning. And then I also finished some dog fur spinning. Um, I feel that dog fur sounds better than dog hair, <laughs> so we'll call it dog fur. But I told you guys that I was going to start spinning some dog fur yarn on commission and I have tried it for the first time um, and here are my results here are my skeins so um, the person that I'm doing this for is a dog groomer and she collected the dog fur during grooming and she put three different dog breeds in a bag all together mostly dark light and dark brown fur with some white spots now there was border collie Aussie, which I think was Australian Shepherd, um, and then another one, but I don't remember. I left the tag at my mother-in-law's. Um, and so what I did was I split the fur, or blended the fur, 50-50 with wool. And this was wool from my mother-in-law's sheep. So, let's see, this was the first one I did. Well, the first one I blended, the last one I spun. I, sp I spun them in reverse order of when I blended them. So this one... I blended with a Jacob Romney cross. His name was Oreo. Um, I say was. His name is still Oreo, but he doesn't live at my mother-in-law's anymore. But he's a nice chocolate brown sheep, and this is 50-50, the dog fur, and Oreo. So this one is 50, oh yeah, 50-50 dog fur Oreo. It's 77 grams and 65 yards so it's like a heavy air like a heavy Aaron bulky yarn um, it's just a two ply straight off the bat um, this one I blended with biscotti which is a um, Shetland sheep so 50 50 biscotti dog fur and biscotti has got like a nice um, caramel brown fleece so it's got like areas of white and areas of light brown. So when it mix, it mix mixes, it makes like a nice caramel color. So this one is really fun. And well, and I'll show you on this one actually, because this one was a mystery fleece from the farm that my mother-in-law does herding at. And uh, it was completely white. So you can see where exactly the dog fur is. And there's some areas like right here, this section of the yarn is 100% dog fur. So you can spin these breeds 100% by themselves, but it doesn't make as ideal of a yarn that I noticed. The wool really gives some substance and strength to the fiber. Working with the dog fur, it some of the some of the fur in there because it was from three different dogs some of it was really really soft and reminded me of angora how it was short and soft um and just kind of weak so the wool definitely helps turn it into something that looks like yarn and if i get really close i don't know if you can see there is kind of like a fuzzy halo to it and that is from the fur it leaves this kind of fuzzy halo behind, kind of like you get with alpaca. I bet dog fur would blend really nicely with alpaca, um, but I don't have any on hand to blend with, so I just blended it with wool. And so, um, I don't remember if I told you this one was uh, 
76 grams, 67 yards, and this one is 81 grams, 71 yards. So they're all the same weight. I did that on purpose so that she could use them all together in a project if she wanted. I have no idea what she's going to do with her yarn, but, um, and this was only half of the bag that she sent me, so I don't know if this is all she wants or if I'm going to be doing more for her, but it was fun. Um, I will say, I will say, I don't think I'm allergic to dogs, but it's a lot of dog hair to be working with and there's still dander in it because it was groomed off of the dog. So it definitely smelt like dog and um, a lot of little hairs got up in my nose. It made me sneeze. It made my eyes itch. Um, like I said, I don't think I'm allergic, but it was a lot and I think that just irritated me, but it was manageable, um, but I noticed it. Um, but the one thing, the one thing I did not expect and the one thing that threw me off, and this is kind of gross, so if you're grossed out easily you might want to skip ahead, oh, like just boop, jump. Um, because it was groomed off the dog, <laughs> you know how uh, sometimes when you're grooming your pets, you get those little scabbies. Oh, yeah, that was gross. That was gross. Um, because I was using um, fleece wool, um, I had to pick out veg matter here and there and like little second cuts that didn't get removed from the drum carter process. Um, so I was used to picking stuff out as I was spinning, but that feeling the scabbies. Oh, that was gross. Like, that is my least favorite part. But it wasn't, there wasn't a ton. It only happened, like, twice. And if I had paid better attention while blending, I could have removed that. <laughs> Sorry, this is just grossing me out. I could have removed that stuff in advance. So, if you're ever considering doing this, um, yes. Consider that. <laughs> uh, oh, also, because you guys can only see, you can't feel. This stuff is scratchy um, and it's not the wool I blended it with it's you know I think it's like little dog guard hairs that are in there that just kind of when you spin them up that's when you they stick out and you notice them so it's not as soft as you would expect um, like you know when you pet a soft dog that's not what this feels like um, it's scratchy um, I don't know if there would be a way to remove the guard hair because I didn't even see the guard hair. I thought, oh, this is soft. It will spin up soft, but it didn't. It spun up scratchy. So um, that is also something to note as well. So I also have some more finished objects. I finished three angel ornaments, which is a free pattern on a blog. I don't have the ornaments with me, but I did take a picture. These were ornaments I last minute made for my aunt and my cousins out of yarn that I inherited from my grandma who has passed away. So I thought that that would be a nice sentimental gift to give to them since um, I have her yarn and um, it was a nice easy to follow pattern with one exception. She used a I think it was like treble three together or something like that. I made notes about it on my project page. Um, so I did it as a decrease, but what she meant was like a puff stitch where you work three stitches into one, but it only has one on the top. So, I mean, technically you're trebling three together, but all in one stitch. I usually call those puff stitches. So um, that threw me off and set me back. I had to rip back a little bit once I got to the end of the round and was like, these numbers don't add up. So that was the one downside. And the wings, the wings are beautiful, but it was kind of a pain in the butt to make um, because it's slip stitch crochet. And I don't have a lot of experience doing that. And I was doing it at such a tight gauge. And I think it's supposed to be done at more of a loose gauge um, that I had a hard time getting into those stitches to slip and keeping track of where I was but it made a very beautiful effect it kind of looked like a garter stitch knit wing um, even though it was crocheted so that was fun and then I have still been playing with clay you guys I feel like I can finally share all this stuff now that I've gifted it so I finished all of my macarons and I was able to gift my knitting co-workers a six pack a six pack of macaron stitch markers and so I ended up making 10 sets, but I only gifted six, or no, I gifted eight. So I still have two packs um, that I'm going to hold on to, but they were a lot of fun. And I feel like 
doing the same sculpt over and over really helped my hands learn the craft and uh, but of course you get bored with the same over and over right so I made some bigger charms because I figure if I can make it big eventually I can make it small so I have still been following creative Rachie's craftmas videos which is now over but you know the videos will be up forever and they're just amazing tutorials I really cannot speak more highly of her tutorials they are great um, but I made a I showed you guys the Christmas tree that I made and I made a peppermint candy um, so I made a keychain one that I gave away and then I also made a stitch marker one let's see if I can uh, no dangling so he's got a little kawaii face and this one's actually not bad it's got the nice swirl on the back as well and of course I'll link to all the tutorials I followed down below um, and I made a snowman which turned out super cute after baking his scarf broke a little bit I don't know what I did but I did bust his scarf a little bit but it's not super noticeable um, I made a, I showed you guys the Christmas stocking that I made, and what else? Oh, I made a donut. So I made a big donut that I turned into a keychain, and then I made a bunch of little donuts too. So I made little stitch marker donuts. So I have a chocolate one. Let's see if I get really close. I need to move my light so it lights up better. Um, I made a little white donut and you can see the back I tried to shade it a little bit with some pastel chalk but I'm still still working on that uh, this was also a tutorial by creative Rachie and then I made a pink one and this one reminds me of you know the Simpsons donuts so um, yeah I made a bunch of donuts and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I forgot. I think that's all of them. Um, oh yeah, and then I made a unicorn uh, keychain charm, which was another one of her tutorials. That one took a couple days to make because of the baking and the glazing. And um, for that one, I actually sculpted the little rose and kind of succulent looking flower and heart on top and pre-baked those as well. And then used resin to set them and then covered the whole thing in resin. So I'm actually using resin correctly now indoors and it's not difficult when used correctly. <laughs> I use my UV torch that I got from Miniature Suite to set it a little bit before I set it outside. Because it's the winter we're not getting a lot of direct sunlight, we're getting a lot of overcast light so it's been taking a little while for these to fully set. But um, So I gave the one away but I, I kept one. This one's not as nice but um, they're pretty large. It's definitely not a knitting charm. It's more just like a keychain charm or um, decorative charm. I painted on the eyes, which is kind of hard to do because the body is covered in glitter. And so the glitter gives you an uneven surface to work with. I guess maybe it would have been easier had I put the glitter on, let it set, glaze it with resin and let that set and then paint it and then glaze it again so that I had more of a smoother surface to paint on. But again, like I said, there's so much glazing and setting and glazing and setting. It takes it takes a, a little while to make these. But I thought he turned out super cute. And then I also attempted to follow her Christmas ball tutorial. It, it went okay. It was my first time working with glitter in, in the clay. And um, one of my first times painting with the resin correctly. So I got resin in the eye pin on some of these. So they like this one dangles. You can see that I didn't get resin in the, the eye pin. But um, it's just a red Christmas ball ornament. But you can see at the bottom it's kind of got this, it's a drip. So I put too much resin on there and when I left them to cure it kind of drip to the bottom and um, made like a little drip bubble down there. So I've learned to make sure to watch for drips as they're drying and make sure to not put too much, too thick of a coat on. Um, so I made red ones and I made green ones, but I got resin in the 
the hole so it doesn't it doesn't dangle <laughs> but every single one I made has that little drip at the bottom so lesson lesson learned um, and then I also followed her penguin tutorial and made a little progress keeper Santa hat penguin guy oh my goodness how cute this is so cute there's the back and he's got little feet these are really hard to show off because they're so tiny uh, but yeah I mean for a progress keeper it would probably be best if he was a little smaller but oh well like I said I figure if I can make it big eventually I'll be able to make it small but here's the other thing with going small you start to lose more and more detail so you have to be careful and then I made my first charm without using a tutorial. At this point, I've made so many charms following Creative Rachie's tutorials that I've kind of got a basic understanding of the basic shapes and how to make shapes and put shapes together, basically how to build a sculpture. And so I used all the little techniques that I've learned through her videos to make a Mr. Dinkles. So if you don't know who Mr. Dinkles is, you have to go watch the movie Trolls. I have two toddlers, so we watch a ton of kids' movies. And they're, like, hands down, one of their favorites is Trolls. So there's the Trolls movie, and then for the holidays, they came out with Trolls Holiday, which is a shorter movie about holidays and uh, it's got a lot of music in it and my kids love it we get up and dance it's a lot of fun but Biggie one of the characters carries around this little Mr. Dinkles and um, I think he talks he says like one line in the movie but for the most part he goes Mew. <laughs> he is just super cute so here is my Mr. Dinkles progress keeper that I just kinda used a reference photo to make and I think his mouth turned out too big and the stripes should be lower on the body but for the most part I'm happy I'm happy with how he turned out Mew. <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm happy with the way my little Mr. Dinkles progress keeper turned out and I learned through breaking so many of my charms that um, I actually secured his little hat I secured his little hat with a piece of um, like the end of an eye pin, like a little piece of wire. I put it in partially in his head and partially in his hat. So that hat is not going anywhere. So I've had a ton of fun playing with clay. I just made a pretty big order from Miniature Suite for some more resin supplies. I'm going to start playing with that as well. I've got some ideas for some more stitch markers and uh, I want to, ooh, I want to sculpt some magnets. I bought some magnets, just the plain circle ones from the store. I want to sculpt some magnets for the, our fridge because Emily's been doing a lot of coloring and we have so much coloring of hers up on the fridge. I'm running out of magnets. So uh, I got lots of plans and I'm just having a blast. So um, yes, Palmer Clay. That's all my work. That's all my finished objects. Holy cow, that could be a show in itself. Works in progress! Because I finished so much, I don't have as many works in progress but after finishing Emily's socks I wanted to knit a second pair so I cast on oh I didn't tell you this was only 28 grams of yarn so it's like perfect for me to because my socks are it's just shy of 60 grams so it's a good way to use up my scraps um, because I have a substantial amount of scrap yarn after I knit socks um, so this yarn I got from Eat Sleep Knit. It's one of the Candyland colorways. I'll have to pop it on the screen because I don't remember. I crocheted a hat for her out of this, which I don't think ever made it on the podcast. It was a Catherine Wheel Stitch hat. I posted progress of it on Instagram, never took pictures after I finished it, and then it got lost. I think it got lost at uh, her aunt's house. I don't know, but it's a shame because it was a super cute hat, and I'll probably have to make up that hat pattern again because it was it was really cute and I know a lot of people on Instagram liked it and I don't think there's anything else out there like it but anyways um, I cast on two at a time tube socks for her now I was going to knit these 40 stitch like I said I thought I should have done 40 but this is a thicker yarn and that's why I'm saying I need to perfect my sock 
pattern for specific brands because each brand has a different thickness. Um, I think this was Bloom and Fiber Arts. You already know because I put it on the screen. I don't remember. But um, it's a thicker yarn. And so I could tell I wasn't getting seven and a half stitches to the inch, closer to like seven. Um, and it's a nice denser gauge. So I wanted to try the 36 in these and see if that it would give it would give me a bigger sock but fit better um so i've started these for her because i've learned i just need i need a sock project on the needles for just some mindless knitting it's just like it's like a mandatory thing right and then the only other project i've been working on is that as an old whip so operation whip down is slowing down now that it's almost the end of the year and i feel myself less interested to clean up all the whips but I still want to kind of have one active, like one old whip active in my my rotation. Um, and I do want to finish this blanket. So I've cast on another square for the mystery knit along from 2014. It's no longer a mystery. Um, where's my square? I finished a square. Oh, it's on the floor. I finished this square. It's kind of like a waffly looking stitch. I don't remember what it's called because I'm just going back and repeating squares I've already done until I've used up all my yarn. So I have three more blues to make and then six purples and then it's done. So, um, But I find I do have to pay attention to this more than it stocking at socks. So it's not getting a ton of attention. I really need to, you know, try to do one to two squares a week so I can get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Clean up those whips. So, um, that's all I have for works in progress. Um, moving on to check it out. So, I received a package from my friend Kat, who has the Cat's Corner podcast, which she hasn't done a podcast in a while, but she did do the Fiber Arts tag, which you should go check out, and she participated in Vlogmas, so um, she's got videos up on her channel. But, um, so she sent me a little package. I didn't ask if I could share anything. <laughs> But I'm definitely going to share the yarn. So she has started dyeing yarn. She hasn't opened her shop yet, as far as I know. But um, she said I can be a guinea pig for some of her hand dyes. So she sent me a bunch of mini skeins that I wanted to share with you guys. So I've got these three mini skeins that are all oh, this gorgeous blue. And this is on her... 8020 80, Superwash Merino Nylon Socks in the Moraine Sedai colorway, which I don't get the reference. I don't... My nerddom is not that high. I'm pretty low on the nerddom scale, so... Um, I think there's a couple of these where I didn't get the reference. I, she told me some of them. I just don't remember. But these are absolutely gorgeous. And then this mini skein is probably my favorite mini skein. It's this really nice green, red, orangish, yellow mix, and this is her 8020 and Shugal Ghoul. Is that Star Wars? I've seen Star Wars, but I, I don't know. I don't want to embarrass myself, so <laughs> it, it sounds Star Wars. Um, and then these two, which are almost equally as beautiful, because, you know, she knows I love orange. These are like orange and green with some maybe black in there. Um, and this is also the 80-20 in Randall Thor. So, meep, 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 meep. Just beautiful, beautiful colors. I think she did a great job dyeing this yarn. And then I got three whole skeins, you guys. Three different bases. This one I think is the same as the minis. No, it's not. So those are 8020s. This is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon in yellow Aja, which is from, um, she's doing a Wheel of Time collection. So this is from the Wheel of Time. I've never read it, but I've heard great things about it. Um, and it's this nice semi-solid yellow. And then this one is my favorite. This is the Great Pumpkin, which I know is Charlie Brown inspired. And this is 75 Superwash Merino, 25% silk. It's just gorgeous. I can't tell on my monitor if 
this is showing up correctly but it's um, got some really soft natural part of the yarn showing through with some golden orange and some speckles of like a dark dark green and it's just gorgeous and this base is so silky smooth and so soft I really really like this one and then this one is a fun base this is uh, 60 Superwash Merino, 20 Nylon, 20 Alpaca, and this is Christmas Time is Here, which I think is also Charlie Brown. And she wrote a little note on here that she's working on this colorway, and this is still not quite what she wants it to be, but it's still beautiful. Um, I'll open it up. But the Alpaca gives it like this really nice softness, but the Nylon it makes it really sturdy. Um, so it's... I've never worked with this blend of fiber before, so I'm really curious to see how it works, and uh, it's such a fun colorway. I'm thinking um, that this might be nice up in this range, <laughs> um, shoulders and up, so I don't know yet. We'll see, but I mean, these are just lovely, 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 lovely yarns, and I'm so excited to be the guinea pig and to work with these. I don't have any plans yet, but that that um, the wool silk definitely is inspiring from a design point of view so we'll see um, oh she also sent me some other goodies which I'm gonna just keep to the side um, but I did want to share the yarn with you so when she opens shop I'll make sure to let you guys know so that you can properly check it out <laughs> um, so moving on to design time, yeah, speaking of design time, I am doing another crochet along together with Scassell in March, and I've got the yarn. Um, I've got some ideas. I won't share that yet, but um, I will show you the yarn that I will be using. So I will be using this yarn. This is Woody by Haiku, which is 53% a backup pulp and 47% cotton. It kind of feels like a raffia yarn. So I just wanted to share that this is what I have and I will be designing something fun to crochet along with in March. So um, I'm going to record my whole process of this and save it for later in the year. So. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know that, that that is on the way. So some of my content might slow down as I work on um, as I work on the crochet along project. Um, I don't want to release it until I know what it's going to be. Does that make sense? Because I hate to get people excited about something and then change my mind. So I just want to make sure I know what I'm doing before I share anything. <laughs> um, so. Moving on to Let's Chat, that's it. So that's my crafty content for this week, you guys. So if that's where you check out, I will see you next week. Um, but if you want to stick around and listen to some more personal things, less crafty related, um, that's what I'm going to talk about. So I was sick. I was sick last week, and that's why I didn't record. I normally record on Thursdays, but I got sick on Wednesday, and I didn't know how long it was going to last, so I just was like, you know what, not this week. The holidays are coming up, and I was set behind on all my Christmas baking by getting sick. It was the 24-hour flu, where you're basically stuck in the bathroom for 24 hours. Jack got it first, and he literally puked all over me. Like, he was sitting in my lap and just projectile vomited everything for the day, around me. It was so disgusting. Um, I, that's probably exactly what got me sick. <laughs> so um, the next day after he did that, I got sick. I had to call out of work, which I felt horrible because I only work a few days a week. Um, and luckily, because it was a day I work, that means Josh was home. So he was able to take care of the kids and I was actually able to be sick sick, not mom sick. You guys who are moms know what I'm talking about. The mom sick, where you're sick, but you still have to take care of your kids. It's not, you, so you're sick for longer because you can't properly take care of yourself. So luckily, uh, I was able to be sick, sick, confined to the bathroom slash bedroom, sleep it off. Um, Josh got it later in the week, and then Emily never caught it. So I don't, that was strange. I don't know, um what happened there, but that's awesome. So she's probably just got a really strong immunity and kept herself distant from the germs, even though we all live together. <laughs> so 
that happened and then Christmas happened. I hope you guys had a happy holidays. We had a great Christmas. Um, we had a lot of time, family time together. Josh got days off, which is rare. And uh, we just got to spend time with, you know, my family, his family, just us in our house. The kids are getting older and they are starting to understand Christmas and get excited about it and open their own gifts. So that was a lot of fun. Um, they got spoiled. They are the only grandchildren on two parts of the family, um, on Josh's dad's side and on my side. So um, definitely spoiled by family. But it was a lot of fun and um, just nice. We got snow on Christmas. It started Christmas Eve, I believe. And on Christmas Day, we had like six inches of snow. But my kids don't have proper snow gear, so I didn't let them go out and play in it. Uh, we just don't get enough snow to be worth investing in kids' snow gear because they grow out of it so quickly. You buy it all for one day, and then next year it doesn't fit. So, um, <laughs> so they don't have snow gear. Um, what else? Oh, I wrote on here one thing that happened. So sometimes I think I'm being clever and then I find out, nope. Uh, I was letting the kids play with the canned goods. You know, so I buy like canned vegetables and um, canned soups and beans and stuff. And I let the kids like stack them and play with them. I'm like, this is great. They don't even need toys. They can play with the canned goods. And so I'm in the kitchen, probably doing dishes because we don't have a dishwasher. Um, and so I just spent a lot of time hand washing dishes and so I, I don't remember what I was doing but I was probably washing dishes I go into the living room to check on them and they ripped the labels off of every can they were playing with every can I mean so I, they probably had a dozen cans so I have a dozen cans of unlabeled canned goods um, so I immediately checked for the bottoms right because they have stamps on them some of them said what they were like the green beans it said you know green beans we're good. But some of them just say, you know, made in the USA or, you know, something or just numbers like for a date or something. So we have some mystery cans that I'm just going to have to, you know, every now and then open a can, see what's in there and then plan dinner around that. But uh, yeah, learn from my mistakes. Canned goods. Find another way to label them if your kids are going to rip the cans off or do a better job watching your kids, right? I mean, they were, they, I couldn't see them, but I knew what they were doing. I could hear them. I guess I just didn't hear the ripping. Um, but yeah, that happened. And um, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was this is going to be my last video for 2017. It's the New Year's coming up. And um, so my next video will be in 2018. The end of the year is always a great time to reflect on the past year and plan for the coming year. And I know that I have heard some other people talking about, you know, instead of making a resolution, making a word for 2018, kind of like a word or a theme for the year. And so I was kind of reflecting personally on that thought. And I didn't come up with a word for 2018, but I, I came up with a word for 2017. So now that the year is over and I reflect back on the year, um, for me, this year has been the year of humility. And I wrote down the definition. Um, from Webster, which reminds me, so Kendra, she has the Hooked by Hamp Happenstance podcast channel. She does a different series of videos. She also has another channel with a daily blog, which, side note, I don't even know how she does a daily blog every day. Every day she does one. That is that is serious commitment. I can't do that. Um, that's that's admiration right there. I, can't, I could not put out a daily vlog. Um, but anyways, on her podcast, she normally has kind of like a word of the video and she gives the definition. So the kind of like a little shout out to her. Go check out her stuff. It's great. She's really fun. And her Peach Lit Pick series is my favorite, just so you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, humility. It's defined as freedom from pride or arrogance. And um, so for me, really, what has happened is I the beginning of 2017, I was living with my dad still. And that was something that was really hard for me to talk about. I was extremely embarrassed um, to, you know, admit that I left my decent career in the military to, you know, to get out. And then I wasn't able to really sustain a household with my husband by ourselves. So we had to live with my dad until we were financially stable to move out on our own. And even then we moved into a very small home. And, you know, so... 
for me, it took a lot of humili humility to be able to kind of not be embarrassed about that anymore and not, um, you know, not let it be a negative thing, like to really own my decisions and my life and to not be hurt by the pride, you know, to kind of let go of that. And um, it's been relieving. It's been very relieving to be like, you know what, this is just what it is. These are the decisions I've made. And I, you know, not that I don't care what you think about it, but I'm not gonna, it's about what I feel about it. Um, what I feel that that might think that other people think about me. Um, and just letting go of that has been, like I said, it's been very freeing. So um, 2017 has been the year of learning humility. And I think I still need to work on it. But um, it has sure felt really good. <laughs> it has felt really good. Um, I don't have to try to like avoid subjects because I'm embarrassed about, you know, things that hurt my pride. You know, just let go of the pride and you know. So, um, yeah, 2017, the year of humility. I can't put a word to 2018 because I think 2018 is going to show me what that word is. I didn't expect 2017 to be the year of humility. It is what has happened um, due to personal growth. So 2018, though, I do have crafty goals. So last January 2017, my crafty goals were to put out more patterns, which I did. I released at least three more patterns and I've I'm working on more so I would say that is been successful um, and then for 2018 I want to continue to put out patterns which I have plans for so that is most likely going to happen and then um, I also want to do more with YouTube so 2018 is gonna be more invested um, time in YouTube and videos. I know you guys have heard me talk about tutorials. I want to put out more tutorials, but I want to make sure that they are unique. I don't want to start putting out like how to do things that other people have, can already show you, like basic crochet or basic knitting. Like th that's out there already at high professional levels. Um, I'm not super interested in doing those. But what I do want to do is tutorials for specific patterns of mine. I want to do. Um, Okay, my memory card got full. Anyways, I was talking about 2018 crafty goals. Yes, YouTube. I want to put out more original, creative, crafty content on YouTube. That is my um, resolution for 2018. And, um, oh, I was going to say, so if I was going to try to put a word on 2018, it would be balance. That's something I think I may have mentioned before. Um, I was overworking myself with... Um, school while staying home and a part-time job um, and all the crafty stuff that I do and so I am not going to school my I got my bachelor's degree I'm not moving on to my master's because I don't think I can handle it um, I work less hours at work um, jo Josh and I will actually have a day off together now which is we haven't had in a year um, besides holidays but like an actual day of the week <laughs> where we both don't work um, so I'm very excited about that and um, yeah, so balance. I could use a lot more balance in my life. And, you know, I was watching, um, so, it's a total side note, I, you know, I got my degree in business. I'm very interested in business. And I really enjoy um, watching and listening to podcasts, videos, really all of the content by Gary Vaynerchuk. And he has a Ask Gary V show that he puts out on Facebook Watch. And I don't usually watch it. I listen to it while I'm driving to work. And he did an episode with Jewel and, you know, the, the singer Jewel. And she um, was talking about how she doesn't like the word balance. She prefers the word harmony. Um, and I really liked her definition of harmony more than balance, but that's kind of the theme that I'm going for. Um, just something that is less stressful because I was so stressed while going to school that I was actually getting pain in my chest, which is not good. I'm too young for that. So, um, yes, harmony and balance. Uh, but other than that, this is a super long video, you guys. Wow, I really can't skip a week. So, uh, if you stuck around this long, I am surprised and thank you for uh, spending time with me. I hope you got awesome progress made on whatever it is that you're doing, and I will see you next week. Until then, happy crafting. Bye!